when snapping is turned on, I think it's like having magnets in your video clips because what it allows you to do is to connect videos to each other by lining them up. And in our example here, it's lining up the in and out points of different video clips. So as you can see there, there's an indicator as well that tells us that the in and out points of these two videos are lined up. And if we decide to connect them, we don't have to worry about leaving space in between or uh, clips overlapping. And it's constantly working in the background. So even when we're trying to move our clip around, you will see that the indicator is always there to tell us if our video clip is at any point lining up with another video clip at the in and out point, and it's ready for us to snap our video into that particular spot. In addition, it works with the playhead as well. So when we move our video clip closer to the playhead, it will just automatically snap our video clip into the playhead. Now we don't have any indicator in this case, but it certainly does the snapping. And it also works with markers as well when we have markers that are built into uh, a video clip. So the bottom line is that a snapping really allow us to connect video clips to each other by lining them up, either through the in and out points, uh, or the playhead, or the markers. And it's a great feature to have when we're trying to build our timeline, or when we're just trying to make sure that our videos are connected to, to each other at their boundaries. But one problem with snapping is that when it's turned on, it doesn't really allow us to make small adjustment to video clips. So as you will notice in this example, when we're trying to move this part of the clip over to the right, notice how much dead space there is. It just doesn't want to move. And when it does decide to move, uh, it will skip over so many frames and uh, it can be very inconvenient when we're trying to make subframe level adjustment. And it's all because snapping is, once again, like magnets. It really by default try to bring the clips together rather than trying to uh, allow you to break them apart. And this is even more of a problem when we, let's say, try to bring the clips towards uh, the other clip. Uh, you will notice that it will just snap right back in rather than allowing you uh, to uh, move uh, that part of the uh, video frame by frame. So to rectify this issue, all we need to do is to turn off snapping by hitting the end key. And you will notice right away that when the snapping is turned off, uh, we can make changes to the video clip frame by frame very, very easily. We don't have to worry about any dead space. We don't have to worry about a video trying to snap into each other. And it's just great when we're trying to make like, you know, really precise, uh, fine adjustments. And it really gives you also full control uh, as to how many frames you want to uh, cut or, you know, at what point you want to stop. So it's a great, great thing to do uh, to turn off the snapping when you're trying to make small fine adjustments to your video clips. However, with snapping turned off, you can now move your video clips freely. And this could be a problem uh, with either clips overlapping or uh, leaving space in between video clips when you're trying to connect them. So in reality, it's really about being able to switch between on and off by hitting the end key. So when we're trying to build our clips, when we're trying to connect our video clips, it's probably a good idea to leave snapping on. Uh, this way you can be very precise. But then if you want to make some fine, uh, smaller adjustments to your video clips, then it's probably a good idea to leave snapping turned off. So I hope this helps guys, and uh, I will see you in the next video.